All right, we're going to get started here this morning. We'll start with our theme song. And so it's good to see everybody here. It's a beautiful day outside, isn't it? It's beautiful in here. Uh, let me see. Brother Hector, would you turn the fans off? I'll do that uh, once I get once I get started singing and preaching. We'll turn them back on because it'll be hot. <laughs> this is perfect weather. It's a great day, and so let's worship the Lord. And uh, we'll start here this, this, with our theme song this morning. Good to see everybody here. If you can stand with us and sing it out, here we go all together on the first. You gave me breath. You, you gave, gave me love. My life's an image of your Son. A story of grace I can't contain. Echoed in my song of praise. So I will give and sacrifice the gifts you gave to lift you high. My only hope and one desire is this one thing. For your glory I live, for your glory I sing. All I have I lay down at your feet, for your glory. Your word is hidden in my all your grace echoes from this heart of thanks so i will give and sacrifice the gifts you gave to lift you high my only hope and one desire is this one thing for your glory i live for your glory There we go. Uh, grab that hymn book, hymn number 256. Thanks, Brother JR. 256. I will praise him. And let's do that this morning. Good to see everybody here smiling, excited to be in church. Amen. 256. I will praise him. All four verses. Think about the Lord as we sing. When I saw the cleansing fountain. Open wide for all my sin. I obeyed the Spirit's wooing. No way, he said, Will thou be clean? Sing it out. I will praise him each day. Though the way seemed straight and narrow, all I claimed was swept away. My ambitions, plans, and wishes at my feet in ashes lay. 
I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each day. Think about those words on the chorus. It's an individual decision. I will praise him. And so don't just sing as the group this morning and think the group will praise him. No, decide I'm going to praise him. You praise him, I praise him. If we'll all make that individual choice, then the group will be praising him. But make sure you make that decision for yourself this morning. Amen. Here we go on the third verse. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad he took me in. He's forgiven my transgressions. He has give him glory, all ye people. For his blood can wash away each stain. Glory, glory to the Father. Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit. Glory to the three in one. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each day. Good 306, 306, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by Savior, Savior Hear my humble cry While on others thou art called Kneeling there in deep contrition Help my unbelief Savior, Savior cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by trust it save me by thy grace Savior Savior my humble cry while on others thou art calling pass me by thou the spring of all my comfort more than life to me whom have I on earth beside thee whom in heaven but thee Savior Savior hear my humble cry why pass me by good start let's do god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be we need a few more smiles in here some of you're smiling great and uh yeah we just need a few more amen do you have it we'll just sing it a cappella. it'll be fine here we go god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be come on sing it out god loves you and i love you and that's the way it should be God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. Almost got Dale. He smiled at the last second. The last second. But you know who was it? Amelia. So we're going to sing to Amelia. I thought about asking you to come up here and turn around and face everybody, but I won't do that to you. I don't want to embarrass you too bad. Just a little bit, all right? Let's sing it to me. Here we go. God loves you, and I love you, and that's the way it should be. God loves you, and I love you, and that's the way it should be. God loves you, and I love you, and that's the way it should be. 
God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. Good. We love everybody. Glad everybody's here today. Now that we're all smiling, good to see everybody. Who's cold? I don't care. I'm just kidding. Uh, Brother Hector, all right, if it gets to 70, the fans are going back on, all right? Uh, one of the ways, well, anyway, I was going to say stop breathing and it will be so hot in here, but <laughs> we don't want you to stop breathing. We're glad you're here and alive, amen? <laughs> Good to see everybody, everybody here. This We're going to see Brother Jonathan back. He flew all the way to Washington to get a haircut. Did you see that? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, good barbers are just hard to find around here. <laughs> left, left Friday, right? Left Thursday, left Thursday, Friday, got a haircut, and back this morning. Man, that's dedication to a haircut right there. You got to love your barber if you fly all the way across the country for it. That was an expensive haircut, too. <laughs> no, we're glad Brother Jonathan's back, and glad he got a haircut while he was out there, too. Amen. Uh, but we're, gonna, we're glad to see everybody. Keep praying for the preacher, uh, which is actually related to him. Anyway, one of the boys, young boys, was hit by a car last night. They were supposed to come to church this morning. He was hit by a car. They think he's got a concussion. He's, he's okay, but just banged up. And so I'd ask you to pray for him and the family there. They wanted to be here this morning and weren't able to make it. Uh, hit by a car, getting hit by a car is not a, a light thing, not a... <laughs> That's a, that's a big deal. So I want to pray for them. And I'm sure we've got a lot of other requests. Good to see Brother Cordell here. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's alive and doing well. And uh, always glad to have him and his wife here. Miss Lynn, good to see you as well. And everybody, before I start naming names and offend somebody, we're glad that all of you are here today. And so let's pray. We'll ask the Lord to bless, and we'll have a special. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful to uh, have another opportunity to be in church. And so, Father, I pray that you'd help us not to do that today. Help us to be focused Help us to make that individual choice, that individual decision that we're going to praise you, we're going to worship you, we're going to love you today, we're going to focus on you. And Lord, I pray that you'd be uh, not just pleased, but you'd be honored, you'd be happy. Lord, you'd be welcome here. You'd feel welcomed here, and you'd come down and you'd meet with us. You'd do something in our lives. Uh, thank you for Brother Cordell being here this morning. I pray that you continue to help him to heal up. God, I pray for Kelsey and Anthony that you continue to work in their lives. Uh, I pray for that family on our bus route, that little boy was hit by a car. Lord, would you please help them? Help him to recover fully, and uh, God, just a lot of a lot of people going through a lot of different things. And uh, Lord, I just thank you for your watch care over us. I thank you for your provision, your protection, and uh, pray that you give us a great day in church. May it be all about you. And Lord, I pray that we would enjoy it today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Here, a mighty shout resounding. Jesus will appear and take his children home to paradise. It will be a celebration for the ones who chose his name, but total separation for the ones who turned away. Are you ready for the trumpet? Are you ready for the call? Soon the angels will assemble to usher in the Son of God. Will He come and find you faithful? Will He know your name at all? Every moment brings us closer. Are you ready for the call? Bible speaks of two men who were standing in the field where one is taken and one is left behind. Two women in the kitchen, one goes and one remains. So get your house in order while there's time. And across there is salvation through the blood there is a way to secure your destination on that resurrection day are you ready for the trumpet are you ready for the call soon the angels will assemble to usher in the son of god 
Will he come and find you faithful? Will he know your name at all? Every moment brings us closer. Are you ready for the call? Are you ready for the trumpet? Are you ready for the call? Soon the angels will assemble to usher in the Son of God. Will he come and find you faithful? Will he know your name at all? Every moment brings us closer. Are you ready for the call? Will he come and find you faithful? Will he know your name at all? Every moment brings us closer. Are you ready for the call? Amen. I hope we're ready. Will he find us faithful? I hope so. And uh, man, if you're not saved, you're not ready. And But you can get saved today. And make sure that you're ready now to be great. Amen. Uh, let's go over some announcements this morning. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, and I'm looking around, I don't, I don't think I see anybody here for the first time, but if, if I'm missing you, Angel, yeah. Uh, if you are here for the first time, we're glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming. Right after the service, we'll have some ladies back by this desk under the window, and uh, we just want I could get a record of your visit. We've got a gift for you, our way of saying thanks for coming to Liberty today, and that'll be a blessing. Um, what else have we got up there? Fellowship Sunday is today. Mexican food, amen enchiladas, and there's there's Mexican lasagna. Yeah, no, that's going to be good. I made it. Well, I didn't make it. Uh, my wife made it, but it's going to be good. I did make the rice that went in it, um, and, and but... Uh, so that's part of it. I, I had a hand in it, amen? literally a hand in it. Uh, but it's going to be great. So stick around right after the morning service. We'll go right out here and have lunch. It's a wonderful day out, beautiful outside, temperature, all of that. And so that's great. Uh, tonight, after fellowship service from 5 to 8, will be the singles night out. We're going to go bowling. And uh, that'll be interesting. Brother Hector's got his bowling stance back there already. That's going to be... Somebody make sure you get a video of him bowling tonight, and we'll put that up for New Year's Eve or something. That'll be great. Uh, anyway, if you're single uh, and a part of that group, uh, they're going bowling tonight. Got any questions? See Brother Hector. Uh, it's time to order the new devotion books, uh, the patch books for the Kids Club, for the Liberty Little Lights. That's $8 a book, and uh, we need that money today. All right, and so you need to put that in if you want to put it on your envelope uh, and mark it in there or give it to Miss Kara. However, uh, that'd be fine, but we need that today. She's ordering them tomorrow, so if you don't pay for a book, you don't get a book. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> uh, all right, so get that in there, and that'd be great. Also, the T-shirts, the sign-up sheet for the Liberty Little Lights T-shirt. There are four designs there. You can see those. Uh, you can pick the one you want. There's a sign-up sheet out on the table. And you need to write down the, the shirt you want, the size, all of that stuff. And that money, those are $12. That also has to be in today. All right? She's ordering those tomorrow. And so if that money's not in, uh, your kids just won't get the T-shirt. And so, anyway, that needs to be in today. If you have any questions, come see us about that. But the sign-up sheet's out there, so make sure. I've seen a lot of people, their names are already on it. Make sure you put that, uh, mark that on your envelope as well appropriately if you're going to do it that way. And that would be great. Cherry Crest activity, that's next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, rather, October the 12th. Uh, leaving here at 3.30, that's $10 a person. If you'll just bring the money, to, folks have been asking about paying for that. If you'll just bring that with you on Sunday, uh, the church is going to, uh, we're going to pay together collectively, so the church is going to take care of that. But if you'll just bring the money, that'd make it easier for us. Bring it on Saturday. Uh, that'd be great. If you're going to go, make sure you sign up. Your name is on the list out there. Two and under. Children two and under are free. Children two and under are double. No, they're free. Uh, so two and under, everybody else has to pay the $10 a person. So make sure you bring that with you. Sign up out there if you're going. If you're going to drive separately, please mark that on the sign-up sheet so we know what we're doing as far as vehicles uh, to go out there. And then be here on time Saturday. If you show up late, you'll probably get left. You can take an Uber out there. Couples Retreat is October the 25th and 26th. That's $300 a couple. And uh, we'll give you more information about that as it gets closer. But couples, mark your calendars for that. If you have any questions, come see us, and we'll help you out with that. Uh, scripture reading this morning is Miss Lisa, and we are in Luke chapter 23. 
If you don't have a Bible, there are some black hardback Bibles there in the chairs. Uh, find one of those and you can follow along with us. That'd be great. Luke 23, verse 27. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For they do these things in a green, in a green tree. What shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other male factors led with them to be put to death. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the male factors, one on the right and the other on the left, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derailed him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, sa the other <coughs> answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst, midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, Certainly this was a righteous man. And all the people that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. And behold, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, and he was a good man and a just. The same had not consented to the counsel and the deed of them. He was of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who also waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus, and he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, wherein never a man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on, and the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after, and behold the sepulcher, and now his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Thank you, Miss Lisa. Let's all stand. Get your hymn books out again. And uh, let's turn to hymn number 363. 363, Saved by the Blood. 363. <laughs> Here we go on the first verse. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, now ransomed from sin and a new work begun. Sing praise to the Father and praise to the Son. By the blood of the crucified one, saved, saved my sin. My guilt is all gone. Saved, saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The angels rejoicing because it is done. 
a child of the Father, joint heir with the Son, saved by the blood of the crucified one, saved, saved, my sins are all pardoned and my guilt is all gone, saved. Find one. We'll go ahead and dismiss the junior church. That's ages 4 to 12. We may be dismissed. And uh, the rest of us will sing out on the last two verses. Here we go. Verse number 3. Saved by the blood of the crucified one, the Father he spake and his will it was done. Great price of my pardon, his own precious son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved, saved. My sins are all pardoned and my guilt is all gone. Saved, saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. All hail to the Father, all hail to the Son, all hail to the Spirit, the great three in one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved, saved, my sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Hymn number 394, 394. We'll sing a couple verses of the solid rock and shake some hands this morning. 394, sing it out all together. Verse number one, here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. They're going to play a verse, turn around, greet one another this morning.
Find your places, and we'll sing the last two verses of the Solid Rock. Remember, we're going to take our offering at the end of the service today because of Fellowship Sunday. And so don't let me forget that, Brother Frank. Last two verses, hymn number 394. Here we go. His oath, his covenant, and his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives away, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Rest in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Good, remain standing. Get your Bibles out and uh, we'll get ready. We're going to take the offering at the end. Take your Bible, turn to 2 Timothy. Did anybody else hear that mic deal in the... Somebody's got... Who's got a microphone out there messing with our system? 2 Timothy chapter 4. I take that back. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. And we're going to preach on this thought this morning, vessels of honor, vessels of honor. We'll read a few verses and we'll have another song and then get into the message this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 2, begin reading, begin reading in verse number 20. The Bible says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow after or I'm sorry, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Vessels of honor, uh, we're all vessels this morning. Uh, when you got saved, the Holy Spirit came to live inside you. And you are now a vessel. You're either a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. We're going to talk about that and find out how we can be vessels of honor here today. Let's pray. We'll have Miss Alexis come sing and uh, then get into the message this morning. My Father, I do pray and thank you again this morning for just a great day to be in church. Thank you for a great service so far. Thank you for the good Sunday school hour. And Lord, now as we come down to the preaching, Lord, I pray that you would help, help all of us to get out of your way. God, I pray that you would help me to get out of your way. Empty me of myself. Please fill me with your spirit. God, I just want to be used by you today. Uh, this is, uh, Lord, we just want to preach the word of God. And so I pray that the Holy Ghost of God would move in all of us. God, help us to be spirit-filled spirit -filled hearers this morning. And uh, I pray that you would change our lives. Help us to understand this thought of vessels of honor and help us to desire to be that vessel of honor. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to leave here uh, changed and different than when we came in a little while ago. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. He created the universe, hung every star in space. He made the rushing rivers and 
put each mountain in place and everything in nature is a work of his hand when this i consider there's one thing i understand some things only god can do now man may think that he has done many great things when you list all his accomplishments a sense of pride it brings but when you compare man's work to god's you won't notice them at all because when compared to god man's power is so small there are things that only god can working miracles that are bigger than you and so no matter what you're facing no matter what you seek though it seems hopeless to you know that god can see you through yes there are things that only god can do only god can bring a shadow back together again only god can heal a loved one when no doctor can and only god can take a ruined life and make it completely new so no matter what you're facing no there's nothing god can't do there are things that only god can working miracles that are bigger than you and so no matter what you're facing no matter what you seek though it seems hopeless to you know that god can see you through yes there are things that only god can do his power has not changed his strength is still the same there's wonder working power when you call upon his name so even if it seems impossible and all hope has been lost you can find the victory at the foot of the cross there are things that only god can working miracles that are bigger than you and so no matter what you're facing no matter what you seek though it seems hopeless to you know that god can see you through yes there are things that only god can do don't lose hope for god can see that only God can do. Thank God for the things that only He can do. Amen? Good to see Miss Charlie here this morning. Wouldn't embarrass her, but we got to see her the other night. She was in the hospital for a few days, and we're glad that she is home and doing well. And, uh, of course, the doctors kind of messed some things up, didn't they? They had you on the wrong medication for all these years and found out there was that wasn't the problem. And so thank God they got that straightened out. But it's good to see her here this morning and uh, thankful for that. Vessels of honor. Uh, a vessel is this. If you look up the dictionary definition, a vessel is a utensil for holding liquids or anything else, etc. Uh, and that's exactly what the dictionary said. It's a utensil for holding liquids. I have many vessels in my house. Brother Weedo has made statements about this uh, or along these lines before. There's, there's a few different places you can get water in your house. The sink, the refrigerator, the toilet. There's water in that vessel. And sometimes it's clean water. But I'm not getting a drink from there. Right? And so there's lots of different vessels. 
Some are vessels unto honor. Others are vessels unto dishonor. Everybody with me? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I brought some vessels here this morning. Uh, if you know me, you know I like coffee. And so I have, this is a Starbucks coffee cup. Actually, when I first got into drinking coffee, this was the very first coffee mug that I bought. Now, we had coffee cups in the house, but I wanted something just specifically for coffee. And this was the first one I bought. Now, it's chipped here on the bottom, and it's got a chip here. You can't drink out of that side or you cut your lip. And, uh, but that's one of my favorite cups, one of my favorite vessels for coffee. I have another one down here. Uh, this one my wife got me, uh, and of course I like, I'm from Illinois, and I like the Fighting Illini, and so that's kind of my college team. They stink at just about everything they do, but I like them, and I like the colors, and so anyway, this is the one, this is the cup that I use uh, when I come over here. I'll bring a cup of coffee with me and put it in the microwave if I don't get it all drunk before it gets cold, and so I like this vessel, and so I have that vessel there. I was going to set these up here, but I'm afraid they'll fall off, and I'm more worried about the floor than I am my vessels. So, uh, I, My wife also got me this one. Uh, this is also a, a Starbucks cup, and uh, it's can't go in the microwave with that one. And uh, really, I don't drink coffee out of this one very often because you can't reheat it. And so occasionally my wife, she likes loose leaf tea, and she'll make hot tea, and so I'll drink tea out of this vessel. You say, are you a tea drinker? Occasionally. I know, that's cute. Miss, thanks, Miss Kara. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Occasionally, I do like a cup of hot tea. If you don't, if you think that you want to make fun of me, that's fine. I'll set that one up there. I like that one. Brother Frank, what are you doing back there? Everybody, turn your cell phones off. I'm going to mute everything else. Just give me a second here. All right. We'll see if that does anything. If it doesn't work, we'll just turn the whole sound system off and I'll yell. <laughs> All right. Vessels. Oh, I got some more vessels down here. I got this one from my mother-in-law. It's a little coffee shop in Ark City, and uh, I like this cup. I use this occasionally, and so there's a vessel there. And be real careful with that one up there. Uh, I got another vessel down here. I like this vessel. Now I don't like this restaurant very much. How many of you know what Waffle House is? If you're from the South or have been in the South, you know Waffle House. It is the greasiest of greasy spoons. You walk in there, and it's like being in a skating rink. I mean, it's just you slide to your table, and uh, it's the definition of greasy spoon. And uh, But I like this coffee mug a lot. The only thing I don't like about it is I can only get two fingers in the handle there. And uh, But, you know, th I'm telling you that makes a difference. Be able to get a, you know, all four fingers in there. You can, you got better control over that. You get better better coffee flow. I'm just telling you, there's an art to it. There's a science to it. And then I got. I also like Black Rifle coffee. Uh, it's very good stuff too. So these are some vessels that I have, and these are these are this is actually is my go-to vessel for coffee. I use this one just about every day. I'm going to talk about something here in a second. I unfortunately found this not in the designated coffee place for this cup, but in the cabinet with all the rest of the lower vessels. I'm not sure which one of my lower children were a vessel of dishonor when they put this vessel of honor in the cabinet of dishonor. <laughs> but anyway, this is my go-to coffee cup. When that one is being cleaned, which isn't very often, I use this one. Well, you know, I, I like to use it. There's, listen, if you're a coffee drinker, you don't wash your coffee cup very often because it gets, it's like a cast iron skillet. Your cups get seasoned. And so when you clean that and soap and water that, then it's like starting all over and it tastes like ceramic. And so, you know, you don't clean it very often. Absolutely. <laughs> so 
So on the, on the rare occasion that I, I allow it to be cleaned, I'll use this one. And then if they're both MIA, I'll use this one. This is my work cup. This is my tea cup. You know, pinky up for my hot tea. Uh, this is my work coffee cup. This one has been retired. But I'm not getting rid of it because it was my first. It was my, it was my, it's, this one's special, so I'm not getting rid of it. All right, so we've got vessels here. Some vessels unto honor. Now, I, if you've been in my house, I have a shelf on the wall in the kitchen that has coffee cups on it. And that's where these four all sit with a few others that my wife will use. My wife has a favorite coffee cup that she uses. Uh, there's, there's something about she likes to be able to smell the coffee as she drinks it. So she wants one of those wide mouth ones that can, like, go over your whole face. You know what I mean? I want to get it from mouth to eyebrows. Brian sent me a picture this morning. He goes, this is how I drink coffee. I had a giant coffee cup. It looked like a five-gallon bucket. It's like, and just poured it right on his head. I thought, yes, there are some days when I need that. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, so these go on the shelf. There's a, there's a designated spot for those vessels of honor. Uh, and then the other run of the mill, if you come over and I happen to make you a cup of Folgers because you have a weak palate for coffee, I'll give you a vessel of dishonor. Okay. Sometimes I'll let you drink from the cups on the shelf. Uh, but anyway, everybody, you, you get the idea, right? Some are more important. Some are more usable uh, than others. We have lots of coffee cups in our cabinets. Uh, but these are the ones that get used the most by me. Madison actually has one that she drinks her chocolate milk out of. <laughs> Madison thinks she drinks coffee. She starts with about three-fourths of a cup of creamer and then goes with the coffee pot, and uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure what you would call that, but uh, Kesley has a coffee cup at my house, and believe it or not, it's on the designated shelf, and uh, it's, it's a special cup that only she uses. No one else wants to get contaminated. <laughs> I mean, contaminate her cup. That's, that's <laughs> well, the Bible here is talking about vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. He said, look again there, verse number 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. And he goes on to say uh, a few things here about being that vessel of honor. Now, as a Christian, I want to be that vessel of honor. I want to be that vessel, if, if we could use the illustration, the analogy here, I want to be the vessel that would be God's go-to vessel, the one that God could count on to be there, the one that's, that's well-seasoned, so to speak, the one that, that he just reaches for all the And I'm not saying I want to be, I, I do want to be special to God. Uh, Miss Lisa sings the song, I, He Loves Me Like I Was His Only Child, and I believe that all of us, should feel that way. But in a way, I, wanna, I want God, I want to be the type of vessel that God would say, I know this one can get the job done. I know this one is always going to be available. You see, there's some vessels. This morning, actually, I was looking for this cup. I, I, I knew that I had used it last Friday morning because yesterday I drank from Waffle House. Yes, I'm weird, and I remember. And so, now this cup wasn't, Anyway, I couldn't find this cup because somebody that I love dearly, they don't love me nearly enough, had put this in the cupboard behind vessels of dishonor, <laughs> behind the Maddie Cakes chocolate milk wannabe coffee cup. And, you know, I'm just, I don't know who put it. I did accuse Madison. She says it wasn't me. And I know it wasn't my wife. <laughs> it was Jenna. It had to have been Jenna. She doesn't have a clue yet. And so, anyway, I'm having too much fun with this. Let's get spiritual, right? I want to be the vessel that God says I can count on that one. It's always going, this wasn't available to me this morning. I couldn't find it until after I'd poured a cup of coffee in here, and then I found this. I thought, that goes with my illustration perfectly. I want to be the one that's available, that God doesn't have to look around and go, where is that one? Where is he or where is she? I've got something I've called them to do. I've got something I equipped them to do. I've got something specific I want to use them for, but I can't find them. 
I want to be available. I want to be usable. I want to be that vessel of honor. And the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy here, he's, he gives him some things. Listen, God doesn't play favorites, but he'll, he'll use anybody. But he's looking for vessels of honor. God won't use a dirty vessel. God will use a lot of messed up vessels. I mean, David was an adulterer and a murderer. The Apostle Paul was a mass murderer. And God still used them. Abraham was a liar. He, he came from a, a country where he, was a, he worshiped false gods. God will use a lot of broken, messed up people. But just like you won't use a dirty vessel, neither will God. God says, I want something that's clean. I want something that's pure. I want some, I can, God says, I can fix the chips and the cracks. I can fix the broken spots. I can use it even though it looks scarred up and chipped up. I can still use that. But if it's dirty, I can't do anything with it. I won't do anything with it. And so I want to be that clean vessel, that vessel unto honor that God can use. Now, here's what this means. The word honor means this. It means valuable. It means esteemed. It, it has dignity to it. It means it's, it's precious. This one was a gift. It means, honestly, more to me than this one does. I like this cup. There's something about this cup that I enjoy drinking coffee out of, but this one me, it has more value to me because this one was a gift. This one has more value because of it was also a gift, but of who gave this one to me? My wife gave this. So this one means more than any of the rest of them because of who gave it to me. So there's value to it. There's, there's some, uh, it's placed in higher esteem. I look for certain cups when I go to drink a cup of coffee, and, and that's what God is saying. He said, I'm looking for some specifics. I'm if I want a vessel of honor, if I want to use somebody to do a specific thing, there's some things that I'm going to be looking for. And he gives them to us, starting in verse number 21. 21, it says this, If a man therefore very often, and, and that's true. It, 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 Brother Cordell, you're, you're a coffee drinker. He understands. If you drink coffee much, you understand. Just rinse it out and use it the next morning. Now, obviously, if there's mold growing in it, you you got a problem. You don't drink enough coffee. You know, I don't, I, I drink coffee enough, there, there's not enough time for mold to go and grow in here. And so you just rinse it out a little bit, pour a new cup. Uh, but honestly, what we're looking, God's looking for, he says, purge himself. God wants you to be a clean vessel. It means to be cleaned thoroughly. Uh, when we were teaching my girls to wash dishes, they would often uh, wash them, say they're done. We'd find dishes in the cabinet that still had spaghetti from three days ago on it. It's not purged, right? It's not cleansed thoroughly. Some dishwashers do not do a good job. I've seen the commercials for these. You can put this, you can have baked on lasagna on this pan, put it right in the dishwasher and it'll come right off. Anybody have a dishwasher like that? That's what I thought. Lies. Those things don't work like that. Maybe if you had a sandblaster inside your dishwasher before, then that lasagna might come off of there. Uh, but no, no, you gotta you gotta pre-wash the dishes. You gotta clean them before you clean them. God says, I want a clean vessel. It means to cleanse thoroughly, to cleanse out. Listen, too many Christians, honestly, were just too dirty for God to use us. Just too dirty. James chapter 1, verse number 27. Take your Bible and flip over there. We're coming back to Timothy. But James chapter 1, verse number 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God. By the way, our religion is not for man's benefit. We don't do what we do religiously. We don't do what we do because of, I want you to see it, because I want to be a good Christian to you. It says pure religion before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. What would that mean, class? Unspotted would be clean. God wants a clean vessel. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 1. Second Corinthians chapter 7 and verse number 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Go back to James Chapter 4, 
James chapter 4, verse number 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. And that's just a few verses that we've written down today and given you. God takes it very serious that we be clean vessels. Listen, a vessel unto honor gets used. Vessels unto dishonor don't get used. Honestly, this is my first cup, but I can't tell you the last time I drank coffee out of it. It's in the back of the it's in the back of the the cabinet. It doesn't get used. It's just there. I pulled it out because it was the very first one and I was using this as an illustration, but this doesn't get used anymore. Why? We would classify this as a vessel of dishonor. Now it's clean. It is usable, but I have some more that are my go-tos. And so this one doesn't get used. It's a, it would be a vessel of dishonor. A vessel of honor is one that gets used regularly. That's what I want to be for God. I don't want, like I said a minute ago, I want to be available. I want to be on the special shelf where all the coffee cups that get used are at. I don't want to be stuck in the cabinet behind something else, behind all the ones that don't get used where somebody happens to open the cabinet and they pull the one that's in front of it, in front of that, in front of that because this one's stuck way. That's not what I want to be. Man, if you're, if you're a real deal Christian and you, you love the Lord, you want to be in the game. You want God to do something with you. You're not satisfied just sitting in a chair on, su- on Sundays and Thursdays. You're not, you're not satisfied watching everybody else get used by God. You want in. When I played basketball, I wanted to be in. It would aggravate me when the coach would put me on a bench, uh, whether it was because I needed a break or I got in foul trouble or whatever. I didn't like the bench. I wanted to play the game. And as a Christian, I want to be in. I want to be in, man. I don't want to be sitting on the sidelines watching. I don't want to be missing in action. I don't want to be unavailable for God. I don't want, to, I don't want God to find me and go, oh, there you are. Oh, I can't use you because you've got junk in your life. I wanted to use you. I wanted to do something with you, but you hadn't cleansed your hands and purified your hearts. You've got junk you need to take care of. I'm afraid too many times in my life and probably in a lot of Christians' lives, we want to be used and then when God starts knocking and God starts calling, we have to immediately go to confession first. God, I'm sorry for this and 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 I'm sorry. We've all probably been in situations where someone comes up to us and says, hey, could you pray for me? And you think in your mind, I will, but it's probably going to take me an hour to get right with God first. I mean, if you need me to pray immediately, you're stuck. I, I've been there. In that, told them, yes, I'll pray. And thought, I need to go get right with God. What kind of a Christianity is that? What kind of life am I living where if, if the first thing that goes through my mind is i got to confess and get right first. I can't just jump in and serve God because i got too much junk in my life because i got too much dirt in my life. He says to be clean, it's a big deal to God. He says purge himself. Notice this, purge himself, it's our responsibility. Those other verses that we read, it said cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your, that's your responsibility. It's your job to clean yourself up. It's your job to stay clean. Yes, I know the Holy Spirit is the one that cleanses us through the washing of the word, and I know it's God that forgives sins, but those verses all say this is part, me being clean as a Christian is my responsibility. That means I have to look at some of the things I'm doing or not doing and going, this is my choice. That's why I said this morning in that song, I will praise him. Listen, just because we show up in church and everybody is singing doesn't mean I'm praising the Lord. That's a choice. That's a decision. I have to choose to praise the Lord. I have to choose to cleanse my hands. I have to choose. It's my decision to keep my life pure and clean. If God wants a a clean vessel, we we ought to live our lives with this. If God wants a clean vessel, I can be clean. I may not be the most talented singer. I may not be the most talented preacher. I may not be the most talented children's church worker. I may not be able to do this or do that or do this. But you know what every single one of us can do? We can all be clean. 
doesn't take any special talent to be a clean vessel. Just takes some want to. I choose to be clean. It's my responsibility. It's an active process. It's not just I show up at church and I'll get clean. No, no, you, you have to do some things. You have to cleanse yourself. He says, purge himself. I need to be engaged in this. God will use a broken vessel, but not a dirty vessel. He says this, go on, uh, verse number 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these. Well, what's he talking about? In context, if you'll go back up to verse number um, 17. Let's start in verse number 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. He's saying these two fellows, Hymenaeus Hymenaeus and Philetus, they're, they're messing some up. They're overthrowing the faith of some because they're preaching a false truth. Nevertheless, verse number 19, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So he's talking about, in in the context of the passage, he's talking about those two men. He's saying these guys are preaching something different. They're teaching something different. And he's saying if a man will purge himself from these, if you're going to be successful for God, he's talking to Timothy right here. He's saying, listen, don't teach and preach and follow what they're doing. Purge yourself from them. Now, the application for us is this. If I'm going to be clean, if I'm going to be purged, I've got to be purged from these. From what? From other vessels that are vessels of dishonor. I don't put this one in the cabinet because those are vessels of dishonor. I want this one available. I want it to be used. I want it within easy reach. I want to know where this one is because it's designated for one specific purpose. You know what I've seen in this coffee cup? Frosting. Now, I like Maddie Cakes. Matt, my daughter makes cupcakes. It's called Maddie Cakes. There you go. Shout out to Maddie Cakes Business. If you want to buy cupcakes, buy from Madison. Don't get them at ShopRite. ShopRite stinks. All right? But anyway, they'll make batches and batches and batches of cupcakes, and and they use Ziploc bags to pipe the frosting out. And I have come home and found this coffee cup, as well as a few others in the cabinet, with Ziploc bags with the tips cut off, stuck down in here. And I'll look in there. I'll pull that bag out, and there's, like, frosting leaked all over the bottom of the cup. It's hard and it's crusty and sometimes it gets on the outside and I look at that and I'm going, that's a shame. I'm getting a cup of coffee. You see, the vessel, it doesn't bother me anymore. That's a vessel of dishonor. You can put juice in it. You can put milk in it. You can put frosting in it. You can put mashed potatoes and gravy in it. I don't care. But the only thing that goes in this cup is coffee. If I ever come home and find frosting in this cup, I will throw Maddie cakes in the trash. If I ever find some other liquid in this cup, I will pour it down the drain. I don't care if it's liquid gold. Okay, I might keep it if it's liquid gold. Which is butter, by the way. We all. (laughs) Nothing goes in this cup but coffee. Nobody uses this cup but me. This isn't one that Jason, Jenna come and get and put milk in it or juice or... No, this is my cup. This cup has one designated purpose. It is for good coffee. It's not for Maxwell House. It's not for Bustello. (laughs) Sorry. It's just not. It's for my coffee. If I invite you to my house and you pick up this coffee cup... I will ask you to leave. (laughs) You get the idea? That cup has a specific purpose. God says, I've got a job for you, but I want you to be clean. And this cup, because it has a specific purpose, it is separated from those. That cup doesn't hang out with all the rest of them. 
That cup doesn't go in the cupboard with the rest of them in the dark. Tracking? This cup hides in the corner in the dark. Men love, de- love the darkness because their deeds are evil. Hey, Christian, you better be careful hanging out with the dark. You better be, hanging out, you better be careful hanging out in the cupboard where everybody else is at. Hey, I want to be used by God. I want to be available. I want to make sure. I can make sure it's my job to be clean, and it doesn't take any extra talent or any special ability to be clean. It's my responsibility, and I can be clean, but it's also my responsibility to purge myself from these. See, these don't go together. That one's special. This is just every, you know, whatever. You say, are certain Christians more special? No, certain Christians are more clean. God doesn't look at any of us and go, you're more special than me, or you're more special than him, or you're more special than that one. But he might look at you and go, you're cleaner than that one. But that one's cleaner than this one. That one's cleaner than this one. So God has to look and go, okay, I've got a job to do. Where's the cleanest vessel? It's my responsibility. And so he says, purge himself from these. You might have to make a tough decision and say, you know what? I I can't do this anymore. I can't be with certain people anymore because they're in the dark. Because they're in the cupboard. They're they're being because of what they do. Listen, it's not judgmental. Uh, The Bible says to be fruit inspectors. By their fruits ye shall know them. And if I want to be a vessel of honor, I need to look at people's lives and go, you know what? They're not being a vessel of honor. Doesn't mean I'm better than them, but I want to be a vessel of honor. And if you're a vessel of dishonor, I cannot be with you. I have to purge myself from you. That's a tough decision. That's a tough call to make sometimes, especially if it's a family member or a friend, but it's absolutely what we ought to be doing. Paul told him in Corinthians, he said, hey, mark them and avoid them. Mark them and avoid them. Vessel of dishonor, I'm not even going over there. Vessel of dishonor, no, I'm not going over there. Where are the vessels of honor? That's where I'm going to go be. Because where is God going to go first? God says, I'm not going to the cupboard, and I'm not going to cleanse them because it's their responsibility to purge themselves. We read the verses, cleanse your hands. I can't cleanse you. You have to cleanse you, and you have to cleanse you. But he says, purge himself from these. Purge himself from these. Take your Bible, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter six. Look at verse number let's go. Let's go to verse number fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? They they don't. When you turn the lights on in here, the darkness leaves. And so they, they don't mix. Light and dark don't mix. Righteousness and unrighteousness don't mix. But there's too many Christians today thinking that they can mix it up and it'll be okay. You cannot be righteous and unrighteous. If you're trying to be both, you're only one and it's unrighteous. They don't have any fellowship. Keep reading verse number 15. What concord hath Christ with Belial? They don't mix. And what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. Specific, designated for a specific purpose. Therefore, it is separate from the rest of them. You get it? We like to, Christian, we, worldly Christians, they like, well, I don't have to separate. I don't have to stop watching. I don't have to stop listening. I don't have to stop dressing. I don't have to stop doing. No, that's absolutely what it means. It means to stop being like them and be separate. I'm going to be over here and not over here 
with the vessels of dishonor. Come out from among them, be separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Notice those promises. God says, if you separate, I'll receive. If you don't separate, I won't receive. And that's just logical. That's what the Word of God says right there. And so we've got to purge ourselves from these. Go back to 2 Timothy. We've got to be separated. We've got to be, listen, I want to be in the game. I want to be usable. I want to be available. And that means it's my job to purge myself, to purge myself from these, from the others, from the dishonorable vessels. Keep looking at verse number 21 back in 2 Timothy chapter 2. If a man therefore purge himself from these, here's what you'll be. Here's the end result. He shall be a vessel unto honor. Honor, again, means valuable. It means esteemed. It means precious. It has the idea of dignity. All right? He said you'll be a vessel unto honor. Then you'll be sanctified. Sanctified means this. It means acknowledged or dedicated or consecrated. All right? So... This cup has been, it's been uh, separated. It's been purged. It's clean. It's been purged from these. It's been separated. Now it is acknowledged. It is consecrated. It is designated. And my family knows. People that come to my house know this one's mine. If I offer you coffee, you can, you can use the Waffle House cup. You can use the Steamy Joes. You can burn your lips on the metal one if you want. But this one is mine. Don't touch my cup. If you're a coffee drinker, you have a favorite coffee cup, right? Maybe you have a favorite recliner in your house. That's a vessel, and it holds you. And when somebody comes in your house and sits in your vessel, you stand there with your coffee cup, and you go. And you look at your wife and go, what do I do? They're in my vessel. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, you're going to have to go home and change your clothes. <laughs> and don't ever come back. <laughs> right? It's acknowledged. They all know. Listen, listen. They know that this is my cup. They know that this one is for one specific thing. Let me ask you this. Do the people around you know that you are a vessel for one specific purpose? Or are you just like all the other vessels in the cabinet? It shows. It shows. I'm such a psycho about coffee, people, I mean, they just know. You come to my house, you just know. Do people you work with, do your family members know that you are designated, you are set apart, you are sanctified, for God's use, or are you just another vessel? Sanctified means that. It means dedicated unto God. Then he goes on in verse number 21. He says, and meat for the master's use. That phrase means this. It means easily used. Easily used. Some coffee cups are more difficult to use. I like this one. Holds the right amount of coffee. Get three fingers in it. Again, Better coffee control, better flow. I'm telling you, I've had some cups where you only get one finger in there. You got to hold the three underneath of there. You, you know, you put your thumb in there. And it's, not, it's not necessarily easily used. Some cups are more easily used. Are you a vessel that's easily used? When God's looking for a vessel, can he go, oh, this one's clean, this one's available, this one's right here, this one's not going to buck the system, this one's not going to ask me why, this one's not going to ask me, well, what about them? This one's not going to say, I can't do that, I'm not comfortable with that, Lord, that's outside my comfort zone, that's outside my, no, it's just easily usable. I'm here, and I'm clean whenever you want me, God, and I'm not going to ask any questions about what you want me to do. You want to pour coffee in me? Okay. You know what this vessel never does? Never argues with me about what I put in it. 
if for some weird, dumb reason tomorrow I put orange juice in here, you know what this thing's not going to do? It's not going to leak all out all over itself. Last night, I, had a, I poured a glass of iced tea. We use mason jars. This has nothing to do with the message, but I talk about leaking out all over itself. I had a mason jar. It was a wide mouth canning jar that I like to use. Somehow, the bottom got broke. Yes, just like that. The bottom got chipped or something. I didn't know it. Man, I put ice in there, poured some freshly brewed sweet tea. Come on now. And I pick that cup up, and I start going to my favorite chair. And I'm like, why is my leg getting wet? <laughs> Thought, I haven't reached that age yet. Um, and I look down, and there is a steady stream of iced tea just shooting right out of the bottom of that cup. Just, pssst, I'm like... What is going on? That was my favorite tea vessel, and now it is worthless. <laughs> I carried it back to the kitchen. I made Madison clean it up because she thought it was so funny, and pouring tea all over the house. That was not an easily used vessel. It was no longer a worthy vessel. Now it's in the trash. It is definitely a vessel of dishonor. I'm just saying, that's what sanctified meat for the master's use, easily used. It means useful. We've all done the job with the wrong tool before. Right? You try to hammer in. I've tried hammering stuff with a pair of pliers. Shoes. Right? Uh, you use the wrong. It's not useful. It's not profitable that's what the word or the, the phrase meat for the master's use profitable it's fit for use some some aren't fit for use honestly i like a hot cup of coffee 200 degrees to be exact 200 degrees in this metal cup will burn your lips off i i i i got a good deal on some metal coffee cups one time I thought, man, these are cool. They're that blue, white specked enamel. Look like the old school stuff. Guys would, you know, John Wayne would sit around a campfire and drink coffee out of this cup. And so I got, I got like a pack of four of them for ten bucks on Amazon. One time, these are cool. And I poured coffee in there the next morning. Went, ah! <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> That's a metal cup. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> I might as well just pour the coffee straight on my face. <laughs> It was, it was not profitable. And then my lips weren't profitable at that point. They were not fit for use. I had blisters all over. I couldn't drink coffee for days. It's very difficult to drink coffee like this. Hot. Profitable. Meat for the master's use. In verse number 21, he says this, And prepared unto every good work. Prepared means to made, be made ready or to make ready. Let me ask you this, Christian. Are you prepared for God to use you? Listen, we can be clean. We can be purged from these. We can be set apart. But if I'm not prepared to be used when God comes knocking, uh, we start doing like Moses. Not me. Why? We aren't, we're not prepared. If I want to be in the game, I better be ready to get in the game. If I'm sitting on the bench, man, when I would go to the bench, we had guys, they'd come out of the game and they'd go sit way down here, like as far away from the coach as possible. You pull me out of the game and I'm like right here. Hey, coach, I'm ready. Whenever you want me to go back in, I'm ready. I mean, I was as close as I could be without sitting on the man's lap. I was ready to go back in the game. I was prepared to go back in the game. Now I see these guys come out and they start putting on hoodies and sweatshirts and go to the end of the bench. I'm like, you're an idiot. Honestly, I'm not going down there. I'm going to sit right here because when the coach is ready for somebody, my coach, he would just grab and pull. He'd be like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. My coach isn't looking down there going, let me see, who do I got? Anybody down there clean? Anybody not sweating? Anybody, uh, who do we got down there? No. Whoever's right here is who coach was putting in the game. And so, I mean, I'd move people out of the way. I did that one game. It was like our biggest rivalry. We didn't have big rivalries, but in our mind, we had huge rivalries. You know, it was like the Chicago Bulls and the Detroit Pistons when we played Dwight, Illinois. And uh, man camp. 
I hated that camp. Uh, not the camp, the, 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 the kids that played on it, man, they were mouthy. Anyway, we, we hated going up there. And so I remember one game, it was the championship game at the tournament. We ended up losing. But there's a kid sitting by the coach. Coach, I, because mentally I was prepared to go back in. I wanted to be back in. Listen, if you're going to be a vessel of honor, which is all of those things, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared to every good work, then you better purge yourself. You better be clean. You better make sure you're preparing to go in because one of these days God's going to say, Hey, Ito, I got a job for you. Um, I've married a wife, and I cannot come. I've bought a piece of ground. And I must needs go and see it. You know what those guys were? Jesus talking to them. Everybody, everybody know what I'm talking about? When, the, when Master came and said, hey, I got some, uh, no, I got to go check out. They weren't prepared. They got too entangled in the affairs of this life. And then when God came knocking and said, I got a job for you, it's like, oh, I, uh, I can't afford it now. You know, I bought two new cars. I got a bass boat and a vacation home. And I, I, I can't surrender to the mission field. I got too many bills to pay. Sorry, God, if you'd got me three years ago. No, man, we need to live our lives prepared. We need to be meat for the master's use, sanctified, set apart. All right, we're going to hurry because that was all intro. How do we become that vessel of honor? How do we get to the point where we're set apart, sanctified, purge ourselves from these how do we get that that was the end result but how do we get there it's in verse number 22 and let's hustle look at verse number 22 second timothy chapter 2 he says first of all flee also youthful lusts we've got to have a plan if we're going to be that vessel of honor he says number one flee also youthful lust flee means to run away it means to shun to vanish disappear to escape, to seek safety. Let me ask you something. If you're in a situation where you have to seek safety, what are you seeking safety from? Something that's what? Dangerous. The word flee means to seek safety. From what? He talks about youthful lust. I'll describe that in a minute but from anything that is dangerous. If you're a Christian, this world is a dangerous place. Social media is dangerous. The internet is dangerous. Hollywood is dangerous. Worldly friends are dangerous. Worldly music is dangerous. And we could just go on and on and on. There's so much out there. It is dangerous to your well-being and my well-being as a Christian. And I need to flee, not just go, mm, not just step back while they're having that conversation at work and go, well, I'm going to try not to laugh at that. <clears throat> No, flee. Run. That, that conversation is dangerous. Get away from it. Get away from it. Don't even stick around. Don't listen to it. Don't hear it because it's dangerous to seek safety. Flee those things. How many of us flee? Honestly, I'm not a good fleer. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say those things. But I don't want to make them uncomfortable, yet I'm trying to reach them for Christ. So I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable by standing up and saying something or by leaving the room and when they ask me, because I'm a Christian and I'm not going to hang around that kind of, you know, I don't want to offend them. Listen, I've had all those thoughts. And all of it is a cop-out. When you come to a passage of Scripture like this where it says flee, flat out flee, Get away. He says, flee youthful lusts. Youthful means juvenile, and lusts means desire for what is forbidden. The desire for what is forbidden. 
I don't have time to go into all of that, uh, the idea of the youthful, the juvenile. Hey, here's what else youthful means. It means inferior. Too many Christians running around with inferior appetites. God has something far superior to everything that the world has. While we're on the illustration of coffee, let me make you a cup of coffee my way, and I promise you it'll be far superior to that garbage you get at Dunkin' Donuts, to that cup of coffee you get at McDonald's. Nice haircut. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, there, we, that's a silly illustration, but it's so true. There's so much more. Uh, there's a far superior product. There's a far superior Christianity than what the world's Christianity says today. Oh, you can be just like the world. No, that is inferior. It's a lesser Christianity. It's a lesser product. I don't want just a run-of-the-mill sandwich. I don't want just a run-of-the-mill cup of coffee. I want something that is top of the line. And there is a top-shelf Christianity that most Christians, honestly, never experience because they settle for inferior. You know why? Because they're not fleeing the youthful lusts. They're not fleeing. They're not running from that stuff. They're just, uh, you know, it won't rub off on me. Inferior. I can handle it. Inferior. He says flee. And then he says to follow. Follow. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness. The word follow means to pursue or to run swiftly to catch. Like some of you chase the ice cream truck down the street, Andrew. Follow. You know, I hear the ice cream truck and I come by and I don't step out on my step and go, I missed him. It's like, hey! Right? That's what follow means. To pursue, to run after swiftly in order to catch. It's not just that, hey, Lord, you know, I'm, I'm here. If you want to use me, I'm, no, no. It's that pursuing. It's I want to be used. I want to be in the game. I want to be the one that God can count on. I want to be the one that God can call on. I want to be the first one in line. It's in super church when I go, who wants a piece of candy? And half of them go, ooh, pick me. Now, most of the time, we don't pick them. <laughs> but that's because I'm not God. God's looking for the ones who are, God uses busy people, he uses clean people. He looks for the ones who are pursuing righteousness. Righteousness means this, it means the condition that is acceptable to God. Right there, we can just stop right there. The con- is what you're pursuing in your life, it is, a con- is it a condition that is acceptable to God? If it's not, stop pursuing it. Just Stop. Righteousness is that condition that's acceptable to God. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? His righteousness. Pursue it. Seek after it. He says follow righteousness. Then he says follow faith. Faith means a couple of things. It means, first of all, religious truth or that moral conviction. The faith of, we have the faith in in the one true God. Follow it. Learn it. Get inside this book. Understand it. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey, what we believe is the truth. All, All things Christian in the world are not Christian. Everybody understand that? Christian radio is not real Christian. Contemporary Christian music is straight out of hell. It has nothing to do with Christian. Absolutely. I read part of that email, Miss Kara, about Lauren Daigle. Uh-oh. Did I say it? Should I finish it? Any so-called Christian artist that spends 63 weeks at the top of worldly charts is not Christian. You know why? Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. If I as a Christian appeal to the world, I'm not a Christian. 
It's just Bible, folks. It's Bible. Follow faith. Follow the truth of God. Faith also means this, to be reliable or to be counted on. It's that verse in Proverbs talk about faithfulness or, or, or faithfulness in a in an unfaithful man is like a foot out of joint, a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. When you're counting on somebody to be there, counting on somebody to do something that they said they would do or, or something that you need to be done and they're not there, it's like having your foot out of joint. You count on that foot. Oh. Try to take that step. Oh. You got a broken tooth and you chew on that side and you, oh, it's painful. It hurts. I can't accomplish. I can't finish that pastrami Reuben because I got a tooth, a broken tooth. Right? I can't count on faithful. That's what he's saying. Follow that. Follow that. I can give you all kinds of scriptures. Romans chapter 1, verse number 17 talks about faithfulness. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 17. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Faith? Or is that five? Long suffering. Faith in the list. I wrote the verse down. It's in the list. Follow righteousness, follow faith, follow charity. I'm hurrying. Give me, give me three more minutes. Charity. Charity means love and affection. Hey, follow those things. Instead of following the world and following the world's styles and the world's way of thinking and the world's doing, follow these things. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 on love, on charity. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Those go together, by the way. It's not charity suffereth long and then charity is kind. No, it's charity suffereth long with the person that's hard to suffer long with and in addition they're kind to them at the same time while they're suffering long. They go together. Same idea, same thought. That's charity. How many of us are following? You see, I, I'll follow after, man, I can't handle dumb people. How many of us have made statements like, man, I, I don't do drama. I can't handle stupid people. We were listening to something uh, with the kids. You know, this guy said, stupid people ought to wear a sign. He says, I'm stupid, so you just wouldn't ask him anything, right? He'd be like, oh, I saw your sign. I'll go find somebody else. <laughs> hey, Ito. Uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> just kidding. I love you. <laughs> right? We've all thought it. We've all probably said something like that. No, no, no. Christians follow after charity. Christians follow after that love, that affection, that benevolence. Hey, it's my responsibility, by the way. The Bible says, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. That's your responsibility. It's not, listen to me, it's not her responsibility to get along with me. It's my responsibility to get along with her. But it is her responsibility between her and God to get along with me. You see, we look at everybody else and go, well, well God, they're just not get along bull." Not get along with the bull. God, they're just, they're too, there's too much drama in there. Are they trifling. Lord, they trifling. God says, no, you, you try. Charity. Follow after peace. Next one, follow after peace. That's quietness, it's tranquility, it's harmony and concord. It's getting along. He says, follow after those things. In the end of the verse, he says, with them, I close my Bible. What's the end of the verse say? With them that do it out of a pure heart. Exactly. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Where's my cup? I'm done. Purge themselves from these. I'm going to get away from these. These don't flee the youthful lusts. These, these settle for inferior products like frosting. They're inferior. These want the superior. So I'm going to follow after what these are following with. I'm going to do it with them. You can't be a good Christian alone. Can't do it. You just can't do it. You've got to have, obviously, the Lord. But you'll never be a good Christian hanging around with dishonorable vessels. You've got to find other people who want the superior product. You've got to find other people who are following after the Lord with a pure heart and say, I'm going to go hang with them. 
I want to be like them. I want to be 30, 40 years from now like Pastor Clark. I want to be where Brother Tony's at. I want to be where Pastor Lou Baldwin's at. I don't want to be that one that waffles all the time. They're in, they're out, they're hot, they're cold. Purge themselves from these. Flee the youthful lusts. Follow after. And then we'll be that vessel of honor. So what are you today, a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.